Thank you, Andrew. Hi, everybody. Good morning. I'm uh, Frederick, by the way. It's Patrick. Patrick. Um, so yeah, our project is called AICON. Uh, it's an acronym. It stands for the Automated Iconograph. And the space uh, in which these, uh, this project is uh, happening is uh, really a multidisciplinary one, where we're combining arts and science, uh, perception, and technology. Uh, the technologies we focus on are uh, mainly computer vision on one hand and robotics on the other hand. And as you will see uh, by the end of, of this talk, the, the robotics we're talking about is really um, a new area we call personal robotics. It's, it's essentially the robotics that it will enter your home in this decade. Uh, my own background is computer vision, uh, so I'm interested in trying to understand how we perceive the world visually. And today we've already uh, heard about talks uh, involving uh, the visual cortex, for example, how flexible it is, how it can be rewired for other purposes, uh, such as uh, becoming a bat or Batman. Um, and perception, uh, which is uh, the focus of my studies in the, in the past 20 years or so now, um, has had a, a sort of a traditional approach where we build models, essentially using uh, sophisticated mathematics, uh, and try to apply uh, this uh, science uh, to images and derive from the data some representation that maybe a robot could use. And over the years, I realized that um, if I looked at artists, um, they had basically the same uh, problem they were trying to solve. They have to become experts in perception. They have to understand uh, how they see the world and reinterpret it. They also often have to wonder how others, uh, the audience, will uh, receive uh, their work. Sometimes they don't really uh, bother too much with uh, what uh, the audience will see, and they will surprise you. Think uh, of a Picasso, for example, who changes your uh, view of uh, shapes. Um, so. With uh, Patrick, uh, we met a few years ago. Uh, we started to uh, bring these two areas, arts and uh, the science of vision, together. And we started to build models. On one hand, inspired by um, tools and algorithms I was familiar with, coming from uh, computer vision. And on the other end of how uh, Patrick thinks about, uh, in particular in our case, uh, sketching faces, and indeed, as Andrew pointed out, if you go upstairs on the third floor, you'll see a robotic device that is based on this kind of modeling. So this is just a diagram to give you a, a view on the kind of uh, thinking we're putting in place. And this thinking is uh, definitely uh, fully informed by uh, the artist. So this is um, based on uh, long-term memory, for example, where you have a notion of what you've done in the past, your experience, and you have a notion of a style. Um, there's interaction between um, uh, what would drive the robotic arm, for example, or your arm when you draw. Uh, we have a way to represent what we call gesture lines, and these are informed from an image. Uh, the history is that initially we, start, we have had two phases of the project. So what you're seeing today, when you go on the third floor, and you'll see later on in the, in the slides of Patrick, is a robotic uh, system. Uh, and in an earlier phase, we started by first building a uh, fully uh, software-based based system. And it, here are examples of the results of that system. So back then, we had uh, effects which were appro approaching the style of Patrick, but we're not quite there. We're not all that organic. And Patrick will tell you more about how we went about the second phase of the project. Patrick. Thank you, Frederick. Thanks. Hi, everybody. It's my turn. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back a bit in time before I met Frederick and we started to work together, just to, to explain why I started to, to this research, why I was interested in that. So um, I should go to this slide. Um, when uh, I was a kid, about 10 years old, I got given a, a board with an hexadecimal keyboard. and um, there was few LEDs, few switches, and it was programmable in machine language only. But I got hooked, and uh, I started to be interested in computing. And 
Then later on, I studied computing. I made a mistake. I studied business computing. <laughs> ah, well. And then, so I worked, I don't know, not very long. And, but that prompted me to leave, to go to live in London and become a painter. Um, <laughs> then, the following 15 years, I really tried to be a painter very hard, very passionately. Uh, but uh, after 15 years, something happened, and I lost it. I lost my passion for painting. Bit of a problem. And uh, so then I remembered that I had another passion, computing. So, so I went back into computing, and of course, what I started to do, I started to work on systems that would do what I couldn't do anymore by hand. So from the beginning, I started to try to do systems that would draw faces in the same way that I could not do anymore. Maybe I hope that uh, yes, the computer will be more passionate than me, but that doesn't <laughs> happen. Well, maybe it's working. Um, so, so I, first I, I worked on that. Just taking, yeah. Um, uh, I first worked on my own for years because of the internet and all that. It was possible to get a lot of information, and get scientific papers, learn to program, and things like that. So I worked on my own for a year, got some interesting results, but then I felt stuck. I thought I needed to learn to be more rigorous, more scientific, learn about computer vision and perception. So I decided to, to join Goldsmith College, and then I met Frederick, and since we have been working together, so it's quite a good collaboration. And um, yeah, I'm going to jump a bit. So Frederick had explained that we first uh, worked on this Aiken one uh, system. We got some interesting results, and that, I think, allowed us to get a grant to work on the Aiken 2 uh, project, which is supposed to be more uh, closer to the cognitive processes we develop, we employ when we draw. So what happened is that during all this time, I didn't feel that I was an artist and all that I was producing art. And I always had this kind of nostalgia, always trying to become an artist again. And uh, at this time, I don't know if you know, but uh, Arduinos came into fashion, and so it was very accessible to try to experiment with robotics. So I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to try to do something artistic with robots. So of course, I build a, a first an arm that would draw, because it's what I do, I just do drawings. So I don't do them anymore. But. And uh, as soon as I experimented with that, I understood that I had to integrate that in my main research. So it was not my art anymore. But then we got the... Um, we got... Oh, no, I'm going to go back. So, yeah, that's the example of sketches that I was doing by, uh, by hand. Uh, when I was doing things by hand. Um, so then we, we exhibited uh, the first robotic arm at an art fair in London called the uh, Kinetic Art Fair, which is there. And uh, uh, at the time, I, I knew that I would uh, get some interest from people, but I really got surprised by the amount of interest that we had at this art fair. When the arm started to work, it just, we had a constant flow of people. We did a, it just didn't stop. We did not draw portraits during the fair, during two days. It just was a long queue. And we were just, just changing the paper, just doing the automatic thing. And so that, that just really made me interested in human-robot uh, relations or human perceivable robots. And there I found a space where maybe I can now do some artworks. Um, so that brought a lot of attention on us and gave us other opportunities to do uh, exhibitions and things. Um, I'm going to... So then we, we did uh, an exhibition recently. Uh, uh, after this uh, art fair, we got invited to do a solo show in London in a gallery. In, uh, and then uh, in Connecticut, I didn't do any good drawings, the system. But then before the exhibition at Thunder Pixel, it started to do the kind of drawings that it's doing at the moment that you can see upstairs. There's those kind of drawings. So, yeah, I should wrap up now. So you can see <laughs> the kind of things. That was in Istanbul. So the, I just want to conclude by, um, so we are 
going to have domestic robots in our environment. But I think there will be problems of uh, communication with them. And I think it's very important that they have artistic skills and all robots should be able to draw, even the little Roomba or things like that. They should all have artistic skills. So that's it. Just the... Thank you. Thank you.